Hey everybody, it's me, Greg Bosson, CPA and President of QuickBooks Made Easy for Nonprofits. And today is actually November the 5th of 2024. It is Election Day. No, we're not going to talk about politics. I hope you voted, uh, or you are voting uh, at some point today. But we'll be all freaked out about it tonight. Right now, it's time for our quick tip. This is the first tip for November of 2024 to try and make your life a little bit easier in Quickity Books. This tip is for those of you that are using QuickBooks online, and it's specifically about something that we get a lot of questions on, both through our tech support agreements and whenever we are teaching a webinar. And that is, the words just look different for some nonprofits than they do for other nonprofits. What I mean by words, I mean the words that are on your screen. In other words, if I click plus new, um, some of you, this word at the top here will say pledge, and some of you, it will say invoice. And you're like, I don't want to do a pledge. I actually want to invoice for services like tuition or membership dues, but yet this says pledge. Well, I'll tell you right now, a pledge and an invoice are actually the same thing functionally. It's just the word is different. But we're anal retentive, okay? We want the word to say what we want it to say. And so um, if you don't like the word pledge and you want it to say invoice, or you don't like the word invoice and you want it to say pledge, this is what we're going to talk about, how to get that word to change. Additionally, it's other, it's more than just that one word. Um, expenditures, okay? Some of you, it doesn't say expenditures. It says expenses, okay? Additionally, uh, I think it says expenses. Anyway, uh, if you go to reports, this is the biggest one of all. Some of you, if you want to run a profit and loss or a balance sheet, that's typically what we call those forms in accounting, you'll notice yours doesn't say profit and loss. You do have something called a statement of activity right here, and you do have something called a statement of financial position. This is what nonprofits call a, ba call a balance sheet, statement of financial position. And this is what nonprofits call a, uh, a P&L, a statement of activity. So some of you, it'll say statement of financial position and statement of activity. And others, it will say balance sheet and P&L. Those are other words. So the point is, the words seem to be different for some of you than they do for others of you. And it gets confusing. So that's what this tip is about. What you may not know is that whoever it is that first set up your books, one of the questions that they had to answer when they were setting up the data file is what tax form does your business or your organization complete? And to get to where they answered that question and to get to where you can change the answer, because see that answer determines how all these weird words appear. I'm going to go to this little gear, and I want everybody to do this to see how your tax form question was answered. You go to the little setting here. You go to accountant settings. For those of you that um, <clears throat> came from QuickBooks Desktop, these settings, these are your little preferences that you can turn on or off. In QuickBooks Desktop, they're called preferences, and in QuickBooks Online, they're called accountant settings. But when you click on it, you'll get to this screen right here, and these are all your little categories of preferences or features you can change. And if you notice right here, tax form, this person said that they get they fill out a 990, which is true. And a lot of you will say, hey, I fill out a 990. So when you're setting up your books, you say that your tax form is a 990. But what that means to QuickBooks is it means that things are going to change. In other words, they're going to change the word that usually says invoice here to pledge. Ultimately, it's the same thing, but it may bother you. Additionally, this word expenditures will appear instead of whatever the word is usually there. I think it's expenses. And then finally, when you go over to the reports, there's probably some other stuff that changes too. But the main things, this is now going to say statement of financial position and statement of activity instead of balance sheet and P&L. And why is it going to say that? Again, it's because I said I'm a 990. And nonprofits technically are supposed to call their P&L a statement of activity and their balance sheet a statement of financial position. Okay. So if you don't like that, you can change it. Okay. And I know a lot of people don't like it. They're like, well, I want this to say invoice. I don't want it to say pledge. Okay. You can do that. All you have to do is change the tax form. Now you might say, I can't change the tax form. That's going to mess everything up. No, it's not. Okay. This is an irrelevant field. All right. Um, the person who does your tax return is not going to be using 
um, this this field right here. It's just for information purposes. So you can change this. So change it really to anything other than 990. I'll just change it to not sure, other, or none. I'll click save right here. And then I'll click done. And now when I go to the plus new, now it should say invoice and it doesn't. It still says pledge. Why? Because I have to refresh the screen. So I'm going to go up here to the top. I'm going to refresh the screen. And now when I click plus new, now this says invoice. Okay. Additionally, when I look down here, this now says expenses instead of expenditures. Okay. And when I go to the reports, whoops, where are the reports? Uh, here they are. You'll notice that now, if it ever pops up, there we go. Now this sh says balance sheet and profit and loss. Okay. Now I'll throw you a little extra here. Um, one word that people want to change that won't change is this still says customers. If you want this word to say donors instead of customers, or you want it to say members or clients or something like that, you want a different word, um, that does not change when you click uh, in the accountant settings, it doesn't change based on the tax form. Okay. To change that word. And then in other words, what the people that give your money are called, you know, donors, customers, whatever, to change that word, you go down to the advanced section of accountant settings. And at the very bottom, you see where it says customer label customers, click that and I'll change it to donors. And I think I've shown you this before. Now, the whole name of people that give you your money, all the names of the people that give you your money, they're all going to be one name, either donors or what are the other choices that I have here? Clients, customers, guests, members, patients, and tenants. So a lot of people just keep it at customers because frequently most nonprofits, you have donors, but you also have other people that give you money. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, but I'll change it to donors here and then refresh the screen so you can see that that word's going to change as well. Now it says donors right there. Okay. So I don't know, kind of irrelevant stuff, but I don't know. I think it's important for those of you that are anal retentive, at least we like the words to be what we want them to be. So that's kind of the deal. That's the tip. And this month we have our three day webinar series where we're going to cover everything you could ever imagine about Quickity Books. Uh, if you click from QuickBooks Made Easy, if you go to live webinars, we only do this twice a year, and there are a ton of you that are new to QuickBooks Online, but even those of you that are in QuickBooks Desktop that want to learn everything you need to know about QuickBooks, uh, if you are uh, a non profit person, like we are, uh, November 12th, 13th, and 14th, um, we are doing our two and a half hour a day for three days webinar series. We play music, we laugh, we sing, we have fun, we learn, um, and we're doing it for the online people on the 19th, the 20th, and the 21st, okay? So again, you just click on courses and training, go to live webinars, and you go to this one or this one, depending whether you're desktop or online. Now just go ahead and click on it so you can, before you go ahead and sign up for this thing, you can see everything we're going to cover in day one, day two, day three. Yes, you get CPE credits for it. Uh, it's $2.99 normally. I think there's a coupon somewhere near this video where you can get like $40 off or something like that. Sign up for it. It's going to be really fun. And I think that's it. And I love you. Talk to you later.